Some radical groups are going to vote for Trump for the sake of expediting the struggle, which is those who doesn't understand about the consequences that comes along with it. And some of them are going to vote for Jill, who might not have enough votes to try to get her up there. So then again, we're stuck with Hillary Clinton and Trump, and Hillary Clinton is going to get enough votes to try to get her up there. So at the end of the day, we stuck with Trump. So the reflection of how we do political campaign is in question. What is it more important, platform or issues? I think when you're talking about elevating the experience of the people, you need to stop talking about politicians and really need to start talking about issues. Because at the end of the day, when you start removing those politicians, those issues are still the same. Yes. So if we start getting addressed, why are we investing our time on politicians? Let's talk about the issues. Because that's been the game the whole time. That's that game. It's not. I always just said reform is not reform is only necessary for those who benefit out of it. Black and brown and people of color have not benefited in reform because they're expected to adjust within the likings of white supremacy. You cannot reform sexism, you cannot reform patriarchy, you cannot reform homophobia, you cannot reform racism. It's inherently building capitalism. So if anybody wants to actually reform it, try to figure out to resolve an issue that actually affects your community and my community. Because when the shit hits the ceiling, we're the first ones gonna pay for it. Not the white yeah, man. Well, okay, so I, I got some questions for you because you, you got some good conversation there. So are, are you calling for a full-on revolution? I've been calling about full-on revolution and expense of taking responsibility as a person to find a way to self-sustain yourself and take responsibility and accountability to try to fix a problem that we can do. Nobody can fix the bed for you. You have to take the initiative to fold your bed at night. Okay. Nobody can do so, that so for I got, you. I gotta ask you, I gotta ask you something you. else too. So do, do you believe that we, we can reform our way to revolution? You know, nope. you, you get nope. small reform because for a while. Because we've been doing reform. Black and brown people in this country that's been marginalized by the very system yeah. has been reforming the system for a really long time. Yeah. For example, the liberties of black and brown men. Mm -hmm. We One conversation that I've said, at one time, black and brown people had a place in this society, but white supremacists did not look at brown and black people as people, they looked at them as property. That was the outsourcing. Three fifths of a man, right? They looked at them as property to in what? In, 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 to objectify them for the means of production and production and capital. Now that we're black and brown people have the able to liberate themselves, some kind of liberty, they're finding ways to criminalize them, to put them back into means of labor and production. Through what? Industrial industrial complex. Through what? prison industrial complex to white criminalization because it's easy to dump all black and brown bodies in a fucking prison yeah. to make them work for 50 cents an hour and strip them with their liberty so those corporations that funded every single motherfucking prison industrial complex yeah. can use that to make production for cheaper labor. Yeah. That is the reality of the game. Okay. But those uh, motherfuckers will never talk about uh, that. Wait, wait. Well, you know, what, what I tell people all the time, though, is that w when we appeal to government for this, that, and the other thing, we're, we're appealing to the oppressor for, for relief of the oppression, and that doesn't make sense to me because you, you don't you don't go to the oppressor and ask them to stop oppressing you because they're going to say no. I always say this. The system is not broken. The system is built for the way it is. Yeah. If you can't come to terms that the system is not broken and you, it's actually working for what it's worth, so Working stop fixing somebody. something that is not broken in the first place. It's not. It is not built to accommodate you. Yeah. That's the reality of the game. So, so uh, I gotta ask you. Why reform? Knock it all down. That's yeah. what I say. So, 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 so then I gotta ask you then. You know, why, why, why are we even here at the DNC if we don't think we're gonna get any any results because out of it? Some of us are not. Some of us are not voting. Some of us are actually having conversation about figuring out to evolve society What's and next? preparing ourselves from a possible solution that is applicable to the community. Not all yes. of us are here having conversation of elevating Jill and elevating Bernie. Some of us are actually having conversation about executing collective, what are executing you do? sustainable structures. Yes. What are you going to do at night and every morning to try to create some sustainable structure that elevates your experience? Where is that accountability? That accountability comes with the people, not with a representative. Okay, so so I got so I got to tell you. First of all, my, my name is Eric Sheptock. Mm -hmm. I'm a homeless advocate who lives in Washington D.C. But I, I was at the U.S. Social Forum in Detroit in 2010. You, you know about that? 
you know, and, and so 20,000 activists all came together, you know, to, to try to get a sustained energy. And, uh, you know, it's, we have very little success. So do you think we're going to have any more success this time in having a sustained energy? I, I was going to say, I jumped, what I like to say, jumped out of the system a long time ago. I'm still, like, saddling on the edge, but I started pulling out, I mean, a certain amount of um, luck happened. I, I ended up landing on a beautiful farm. And we accept people in to change the way that they are, learn how to grow food. We, mm -hmm. I've got it's probably 12 young people between the ages of 23 and to, so, white 30 White man is able farm. to live prosperous and actually I, able, I hold on, white man is able to live with prosperous and freedom. Black and brown men has it in a really long time into this day. We had 163 black men that died here died through police harassment and police brutality. And that's the reality of the game. Don't try to make this an inclusive space because if we want to talk about being inclusive, let's talk about talking about the oppression of a black man and a black woman because at the end of the reality. That's why we talk about black life. If all yes. lives matter, no, black, black lives, lives matter. Yes, black lives do matter. I've never said that one, I've never said But that's the problem with those people that's yeah. talking about. Okay, and so nobody wants to talk about that conversation. Yeah, so, so you know what what, 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 what you all are saying to me, or saying right now rather, is it reminds me of Occupy. We had the same struggle with Occupy, where good I'm white people came in and were supportive of blacks. And I, I'm adopted by white people. My my father was Polish, my mother's Italian. I'm adopted. You know, but but I want to say this though that that um you know I I actually felt kind of badly for the white people. Because, and they, they were being told by blacks, you know, look, you let us throw slavery, you let us throw in Jim Crow, you know, don't lead us now. And the white people were saying, look, we're all ears, we'll stop, we'll listen, you tell us what you want us to do, what you don't want us to do, yada, yada, yada. I've never, I've, unfortunately, it's different for me. I, I mean, yes, I, I understand that black lives matter and that sort of thing. I understand all this. Got, it's kind of hard to, I have a disability, I've got a headache. So, I mean, I'm, I'm on a different page and wave like the most of those people. I try to keep myself low and out of light. I mean, I try not to do as much as possible. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so, 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 uh, I mean. I a lot of things. It's just, I don't want to have to. I know it's like I have to justify. I mean, and, and honestly, I'm not, I don't feel as though I should. Well, I know I should have to, but I mean, I've never really done anything to to ever try to oppress every oppress everybody, anybody. Right. I've basically just tried to fight for what I see to be better for everybody. Yeah. Honestly, right. I was at the two, I was up in New York in 2012. I had I have a question. What are five things? What are five things that are not in the Constitution that every person should have? Best five answers I could come up with were food and water, shelter, education. Insur um, insurance, insurance, well, I mean, healthcare, and electricity. Those five things were the best five things I could think of. Yes, and I've been asking people. I I want for that stuff. I mean, honestly, I believe in I believe what's going on in in Ger either Germany or Dane, either Danish or German are basically going with a um, guaranteed minimum income. So okay. basically. If you have a job, it's for convenience. You should not have to have a job just to live. That's yeah. one thing that I believe. Should well, I mean, what you should work if you can, though, right? Oh, yeah. it yes. Isn't isn't the communist motto from from each according to their ability to each according to need? I mean, do, do you agree with that motto? I'm sorry, I couldn't understand. I said the the communist motto is from each according to ability to each according to need. So in other words, anyone who can work should work, and then the government should give to those who can't work. Well, honestly, you can you can make a job creating something. You can make a job destroying something. You could pay somebody for just sitting there and doing nothing, and, and basically typing keyboards and doing nothing. And that sort of stuff. I mean, there, yeah, there's nothing wrong with giving someone constructive ability to do stuff. But I mean, if you give someone the means, the means to exist and go about and doing things as they want to, yeah, being doing more creative they, things, yeah. working yeah. harder, on themselves yeah. on what they want to do, mm -hmm. and basically, I mean, it ends up being more constructive yeah. for, for communities. Yes, definitely. I mean, I know what you're saying. 
community plates and community teaching. I mean, get the best people out there. Yes, involve mental stuff. But, I mean, there should, anybody making over a million dollars should, anybody who makes over a million dollars should be taxed at like 60% because you do not need more than a million dollars to live in a year. Nobody needs more than a million well, dollars to live in a year. It's an extreme profit to make in the system. So if you're making such an extreme, such extreme amounts of money working in the system, and the, and the system pays you back that much, uh, you're, benef you're benefiting from it, so you need to give it back. Government, yeah. government should make the mean, the mean wage in yeah, well, their way. They should only be paid what is the mean wage so they can feel what everybody's going through rather than what's being stuck with the elite. Honestly, you should not, you should not be able to get a job just calling people, just, just calling donors. And that's, just, that's all the freaking, that's all the freaking congressmen do. I mean, honestly, I would love a lot. And they say, I'm not even going to call. Honestly, I'm not. I'd rather do work. I'd rather, I'd rather speak to my people. Right, right. Well, well, I get what you're saying about the, the minimum, you know, living expenses. You're, you're saying you, you, had a, you had a decent home, a shelter. A reasonable amount of food to live. You're not gonna not work. You're gonna wanna work. You're gonna yeah, you feel good. You're gonna have everything you need. You're gonna have everything, you need. You're gonna have everything mean, you need, and you're gonna feel better going to work and doing something more constructive <coughs> for the community instead of just and the fact that you're busting your ass for minimum wage mm. and, 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 and hurting the whole time and being miserable the whole time. And, Right. I mean, that's not good for anybody. Well, you you sound like like you might work in homeless services or something because that. I I I, I better I work with. Uh, no matter who comes in this well, all right, I'm a caregiver. The, for about 15 years, I worked with people with disabilities, people with mental illnesses, children. Okay, so so then you know about a thing called permanent supportive housing. Pardon me. You you know about a thing called permanent supportive housing. So the, 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 the federal government has this program uh, uh, where, where they offer housing first to people with, who are homeless with disabilities, physical or mental, and, and, and it, it's built on what you just said, you know, where if you get them out of the stressful environment first and into a home, that, then they can deal with the other issues later on. Absolutely. Yeah, and, I mean, look at all the empty homes we have. Yes, we have three times as many empty homes as we have homeless people. Yeah, I mean, what, what, what other give country them, can can brag them. about ha such stupidity, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's insanity. Yes. So, the <laughs> definition yes. of insanity. Yeah. So, do, do you think this is turning more into more of a Woodstock hippie type thing with this tent city going on out here and FDR Park? Well, today it looks a little more like that. You know, um, yesterday it didn't look too much like that. Yesterday there was all different groups of people. You know, yeah. um, kind of meshy. Yeah, I was um, down here two days ago. Well, I wasn't here yesterday. Yeah, yesterday, um, yesterday seemed a lot bigger than they, of course it rained, you know, the storm. Oh. Was, okay. Yeah, you had, uh, you know, the people at the fence, you had Black Lives Matter, you had the, mm. uh, you know, Fuck the DNC, Fuck mm. Bernie, and they kind of all, all ended up together in a way. Yeah, so is there going to be something big tomorrow on the last day, do you know? I have no idea. I have to leave tomorrow. I thought something was going on tonight. Oh. I thought that I oh, heard they, like Lee Camp and... Oh, uh, I, I heard there was going to be like a farting where they, they were going to serve beans to everybody and then we're all just going <laughs> to... I saw that on the internet. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. I thought it was people that were agreeing to do it on the inside. Oh, okay. You know, to get them on the inside. I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> all right. But I didn't hear anything else about it. All right, well, thank you. What's up, Pam? Hey, sir. This is Eric Sheptock reporting from FDR Park in Philadelphia. Just a couple blocks away from the Democratic National Convention's venue inside of the Wells Fargo Arena. <laughs>